Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. In today's headlines, more than half of Afghanistan's population is facing severe food insecurity. Strikes observed across Haiti to protest insecurity and fuel shortages. Carbon dioxide emissions hit record 10-year high in 2020. Families affected by 2019 Senkata and Sakawa massacres marched to the Bolivian capital. In our first story, more than half of Afghanistan's population is facing acute food insecurity. The World Food Program has warned that 22.8 million people are marching towards starvation. One in two Afghan people is facing crisis or emergency level food shortages. 3.2 million children under the age of five are at risk of acute malnutrition by the end of 2021. Concerns have grown as the country faces its worst winter in a decade. Moreover, 25 out of 34 Afghan provinces are facing a severe drought. Around 40% of the country's crops were already lost this year. Total wheat production is expected to decline by another 25%. The drought has forced thousands of families in the western region to sell their livestock and seek shelter in temporary camps. According to the German Watch Group, Afghanistan was the sixth most affected by climate change in the world in 2019. Shortly after the Taliban took over in August, crucial foreign funds for Afghanistan were immediately cut. Nearly 10 billion in Afghan reserves in the United States were also frozen. These steps pushed Afghanistan's economy near collapse after years of making it dependent on foreign aid. Donor funds accounted for over 40% of the GDP and 75% of state expenditures. However, as per reports, a majority of the U.S. foreign aid flowed through contractors to address U.S. priorities. The prices of essential goods like flour and cooking oil have now risen by 30 to 50% in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, the United Nations has warned that the poverty rate could soon rise to 97% of the population. In our next story, a general strike was observed across several areas in Haiti on October 25th. As per local reports, public schools, banks and businesses remained closed in protest of fuel shortages and rising abductions. Work stoppages were witnessed in cities including Jeremy, Le Caillé, Gunaive, Hinche, and the capital of Port-au-Prince. Monday's strike followed a call issued by public transport unions. On October 21st, the Association of Petroleum Product Drivers also went on strike. It stated that drivers had been regular victims of kidnappings for ransom. Armed gangs have also been held responsible for blocking the transport of critical supplies of fuel. Hospitals across the country have issued SOS calls to the government as well as the United Nations. An association of private hospitals has warned that 40 facilities may have to close down if shortages persist. Two major hospitals in Port-au-Prince stated that they would have to suspend services by October 26th. Fuel shortages will impact generators which are needed to power medical equipment, including oxygen supply. Hundreds of children, maternity and COVID-19 patients are at risk. Aid agency MSF has also warned that it might have to reduce services at its trauma hospital in Tabare. Armed gangs have blockaded oil terminals in Port-au-Prince for weeks. The resulting fuel shortages have also affected telecommunications and portable water services. In our next story, the concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere hit a new record high in 2020. According to the World Meteorological Organization, carbon dioxide rose to 413.2 parts per million. This increase was faster than the annual rate over the past 10 years, despite a temporary slowdown during the pandemic. Under current commitments, global emissions will be 16% higher in 2030 as compared to 2010. This will fall significantly short of 45% reduction needed to halt warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius. These revelations are significant just as countries get ready to convene the United Nations COP26 conference on October 31st. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison stated on October 26th 
that his government had agreed to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. However, it will not introduce legislation on the goal, relying instead on consumers and companies to reduce emissions. The plan also does not include any further cuts to emissions by 2030. Coal and gas continue to play a significant role in Australia's own power grid. Australia is also the world's third largest exporter of fossil fuels. The country's current emissions target are among the lowest made by the G20 and its allies. And finally, we go to Bolivia, where a march by families affected by brutal violence during the 2019 coup concluded on Monday. Relatives of the victims of the Sankata and Sakaba massacres arrived in La Paz on October 25th. They had begun their 192-kilometer march from the Oruru department on October 19th. On October 23rd, the group submitted a list of 22 demands to the government. These included the initiation of criminal trial against the coup leaders Janine Agnes. The document made reference to Decree 4078 that exempted police officials from criminal responsibility. Agnes is already facing genocide charges for the severe repression by armed forces in 2019. At least 10 people were killed after police opened fire outside the Sankata hydrocarbons plant on November 19th. The massacre took place just a few days after 11 people were killed during an anti-coup march in Sakaba. Victims' families are demanding that criminal proceedings be initiated against police and military commanders. They are also demanding action against the doctors who did not offer proper care to the protesters. After arriving in the capital on Monday, the families demanded to meet with President Luis Arce. They announced that they would hold a vigil at Murillo Square until they received a response. Shortly after, it was announced that a delegation led by President Arce will meet the families on October 26th. That's all we have in today's episode. For more details and stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and visit us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you.